So you may recall that back in one of the early videos for Wonky Kong, I encouraged you to only create situations where one object was looking at detection of a second object and not to end up with a sort of circular situation where each object independent of each other was looking for the other ones. And I might have just lost you with that for a little bit. But let me point out that I've got that right now. Right now with my shark, my shark is looking to see if he's touching the bad fish. And if he is, he gets sick for a few seconds. Simultaneously, and in a completely separate action, I have the bad fish looking to see if he's touching the shark. And if he is, he hides for a few seconds and then comes back uh, and we take away a point, right? And, and what I want to do is to force for you now the fact that sometimes this can be a real issue. Now, it won't be an issue all the time. In fact, the majority of the time it should work okay. But when it doesn't work, it will confuse the daylights out of you and your students both. And so I want you as the teacher to see how this, uh, what causes this and, and how we fix it. So what I'm going to do, and you don't need to do this in your own code, I'd encourage you for the time being right now just to watch what I'm doing. I've gone into each of the good fish right now and I've changed them temporarily. I've, I've hidden them from the screen and, and taken out their code. And so when I run this, I'm just gonna produce a, a piece of code where I'm, it's only me, the shark, and the bad fish. And what I want you to watch is what happens when these two collide. The majority of the time when the shark touches the bad fish, we'll see all of the actions take place. We'll see the score drop by one point, we'll see the uh, little red fish disappear temporarily, and we'll see the shark get sick. And so let's see here. Oh, they're perfect. On the very first time that I tried to do this, it ha the bad thing happened, which was great timing. Uh, last time, I, I, a few minutes ago, I tried shooting this video and it didn't work for several uh, catches. But you notice what happened there. If you stop this right now, go back and watch the video. I can't, I can't go back and repeat this right now for you myself. But you'll notice that when the shark caught the bad fish, the bad fish disappeared, that we got a score of negative one, but my shark never got sick. And you say, why? Wait a minute. Now, I mean, the majority of the time that should work. Here, I'll catch the fish and shark gets sick. But again, if you go back in the video a few seconds and watch that first one that I just ran, the shark didn't actually get sick. And the, and the question is, why? First of all, you, and then this will be the, what confuses you. You'll say, you know, I've written code that says when the shark is touching bad fish, then get sick. Why didn't that work? Well, Again, we want to avoid situations where two people are both looking for each other. Here's what actually happened. Uh, the, you know, all of these fish are running through their, their cycles saying forever, do this, do this, do this. And what happens is that when the bad fish detects that it's touching the shark, he hides himself and changes the score. Well, when he's hidden, he isn't actually able to touch the shark. Uh, the scratch is set up in such a way that the only way that touching works is when both of them are visible. And so what happens is if the bad fish detects that it's touching the shark first before the shark detects that it's touching the bad fish, then the, the bad fish hides, effectively meaning that they're no longer touching. And so he hid and changed the score by negative one, but the shark was unable to detect that he's touching the bad fish because the bad fish hid first. Right? And so it all comes down to timing, which one happens to, to get detected first. So we want to avoid this situation. We don't want to have both looking for the other. We only want to have one looking for the other. And you say, well, that's fine. Okay, I'll, let's have the bad fish look for the shark. But the problem is I do want the shark to get sick, right? I do want the shark to, to, to do this. And so what we're going to do is the following. We're going to not have him check this, but we're going to have him do this only in response to a signal from the bad fish. So we have bad fish saying, hey, if you're touching the shark, then hide, change the score, and so on. But I want you to signal the shark that you, in fact, just touched the shark. And so what I'm going to do is to broadcast a message. We've looked at broadcast before. We want to make a new message called touching, got a spell right, touching shark. 
right? So he's going to broadcast touching shark and then hide and change the score. And in the meantime now, the shark can just say, when I get the signal that we're touching, I want to get sick. Now you'll see that this is a much better way to do it. Now he's always going to get sick, right? No matter how many times I do this, he's always going to get sick because only one is looking for the other. Only the bad fish is detecting their collision, but he's sending a message, a signal to shark that it happened. Uh, strictly speaking, these aren't exactly the same because in my previous version, I actually had the, the shark uh, stopping when he got sick. We can decide whether that's important or not. I actually don't mind if he doesn't detect I don't mind if he's moving while sick. If you wanted to actually have him, I'm going to leave that as a task for you. How would you solve it so that when they're touching, the bad shark stays still, the sick shark stays still until uh, he comes back to be the good shark? But in the meantime, that's a good place for us to stop with this right now.